this is the last Sunday uh, of a series that we've been doing throughout the month of January uh, called First, and it's all about putting God first in every area of our lives. And the reason that uh, we're doing this is because I, I truly feel that God spoke to me uh, as we were ending last year. Actually, that was the message on Christmas Eve. Some of you will remember that. It's about putting Jesus at the center, putting Jesus first. And the reason is, is because a lot of us have gotten our lives out of order. And because a lot of our lives are out of order, they're not working very well. And there's stress, and there's complications, and there's issues. And so uh, we want to talk about that uh, in this series. And so our theme verse uh, is, uh, in everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Now, if we don't believe Pastor Wayne, but you believe God's word, then if you put God's first, put God first, the rest is going to be blessed. Right? That's what we've been talking about. And so today, I just want to, just for a few minutes, and my goal is to let you out early so that you could go to the group's fair. If you believe that it's possible for me to get done early, remember, you believe in miracles. This is Miracle Sunday. We have faith. Okay? Uh, I want to talk to you about our relationships. Uh, and I intentionally didn't say this relationships first, but first, uh, relationships. In, in, in case I mess it up if over the next few minutes, let me be super clear about what I want to communicate to you today, what I feel like God is saying that we need to hear. First of all, all of us need to prioritize having relationships in 2023. And the second thing we need to hear is those relationships that we have need to be in the right order. Okay? That's the simple message we're done, go to the groups here. Not really, but uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to communicate here today. Now, you say, what's the big deal about relationships? Some of you are loners, you know, some of you are uh, introverts like myself. You know, when I tell people that I test out as an introvert, they kind of laugh. They're like, that's kind of funny because of what you do for a living, you know, and I just want you to know that I do love you, right? And I love spending time with you. I love being your pastor. I love serving you. And, and, and doing this right here is one of the joys of my life. I also love being alone. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Look at all these introverts in this church. Right? We need some extroverts. Come on, help us out. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of introverts. But listen, if we were to boil down the Christian life into one word, I think that word would be relationships. As a matter of fact, somebody asked Jesus what was the most important commandment, and he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is saying the, the two most important things are your relationship with God and your relationship with other people. The two most important things are your relationship with God and your relationship with other people. Some of us are fine with having a relationship with God. It's other people we have an issue with. But Jesus said they're both important. Now, the order is important, right? We got to love God. Now, if we love God first, how many know that's going to have a positive impact on the rest of your relationships? But he also says that we're supposed to love other people. And I love that those verses don't say, you know, the, this is the greatest commandment, to do stuff for God. And the second greatest commandment is to do stuff for other people. It's not about doing, it's about love. And love is a relationship word, right? Uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, and this is the message paraphrase version, but I like how it says it. No matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Why? Because we're not robots. We're not consumers of religious goods and services. We have been invited to be part of a family with our heavenly father. And he invites us to come together as the family of God to, to do a lot of things for one another. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there are 59 times in the New Testament that the Bible gives us a commandment to do something for one another, love one another, pray for one another, 
bear one another's burdens, encourage one another. Uh, there's lots of those one another's, uh, uh, serve one another, forgive one another. That's a lot of one another's that we're commanded to do. I heard a pastor say it this way, that the primary activity of the early church was one anothering one another. Did you know it's impossible to one another other people while you're sitting there in your seat? Now, we come to church, and that's great. We, pro- we talked about that last week, right? But if we're going to truly obey all of the one another's, we got to take it a different step and actually get involved. Yes, I'm talking to you, Right? This is why this is why we talk about this is why we talk about groups. This is why we talk about teams because it's one of the very best ways to get connected to the body of Christ and to actually fulfill the one another's of Scripture. It's quiet in here because I'm preaching good. Now, in just a few minutes, the altar call is going to be to go out into the hub and join a group. Okay, that's the altar call here today. I'm giving you the heads up so you can wrestle with Jesus right now. All right. Hopefully the Holy Spirit will win today. But I want you to take a look at these message notes that we gave you today. By the way, I would love for you to go ahead and get in the habit of grabbing these every time that you come into the worship center. It's also, uh, you can get it electronically on the QR code on the connection card in front of you. Uh, For the connection card, you can do that every single time. But there's a list of all of the groups that we're offering this particular semester. And uh, there's an opportunity for everybody, lots of freedom groups. If you haven't done freedom yet, please do your best to make that your first group. There's groups for guys, lots of opportunities for guys there. Very ex- particularly excited about the one that David Hall is leading uh, called Authentic Manhood. And, that, and, I, and again, guys, if you don't know what group to join, join that one because that's really going to help you grow as a man of God. There's women's groups there. I like Jesus in Euchre. I mean, that just blesses my spirit. All right, uh, but there's a lot of options there. There's a great, there's a li- Women of Grace Bible study that's going to be Tuesday nights. That'll be a little bit larger, and, and all of that. You can see all of that. And then on the next page, there are groups for marriage groups. There's parenting groups, age specific groups. Uh, I don't know if there's some listed there, but we have some groups for students there. There's a worldview class that Pastor Jeff is teaching on Sunday morning for high school students. That's a group your students can be part of. Interest based groups there, study based. I'm going to be leading. Uh, we, last year we did the 30 day Bible study challenge that's going to be my group if you want to learn how to study the Bible and grow in that and then there are support groups there so let me encourage you uh, to check those out there's way more details uh, on the QR code all over the building there uh, that you can do and uh, uh, make sure that you're part of a group so I want to encourage you to do that that's how we do all of the one another's uh, in scripture And the reason this is so important is because we were designed by a God of relationship for relationships. I'm going to go on the deep end here for a second, so lean in, if you would, for a second. Watch this. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image. Now, you know that you were created in the image of God. So when we were created, God said, let us make man in our image. And that word us is the word Elohim in the Hebrew. And Elohim is the plural word for God. Now, that doesn't mean that we serve many gods, but we serve one God who exists in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who is in perfect relationship with himself from the beginning of time. Are you getting this? So God has always existed in relationship. And when he created you in the image of God, he created you for relationship. You weren't meant to live alone. You weren't meant, I mean, to be alone. We were made for each other. There was a horrendous experiment done about 50 years ago where a doctor took some babies and put them in a room after they were born, and they were able to feed them in different ways, but no human touch. They all died. You were made 
to be connected to other people. It's how you were wired. You can't fight it. You can fight it. It's not going to work out very well for you. But the reality is we need each other. And so since God is a God of relationships, we are designed for relationships. Uh, And since we need relationships, we should prioritize them in our lives. Because relationships are more important than accomplishments. Relationships are more important than achievements. Relationships are more important than trophies. Relationships are more important than the number of followers you have on social media. Because how many know those aren't real relationships? Now, I think all of us agree with that. But the question we should be asking is, is this actually true in my life? And there's three tests that will help us determine if what are the priorities in my life. Uh, One is our schedule. You know, does my time and the time I spend, does my calendar actually reflect the fact that, that my priority is relationships with people? Money is another test of our priorities, right? This is why we talked about tithing, because one of the ways that we put God first, because money is a test of our priorities. What are we spending our money on? Or, or if we're saving money, what does that say about our relationships? And then our actions, because most of us have better intentions than we actually have actions. Right? Well, I want to, but what do our actions say is a priority to us? Those are the questions I'm asking you today. And I, I'm challenging you that we should prioritize our relationships. Now, the issue is that we live in a culture that increasingly uh, deprioritizes relationships. Uh, our culture, especially in the last few years, has encouraged separation, isolation, fear, 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 fear. Uh, how many know you can go into a uh, you can go to a crowded store and uh, go into the store and get your stuff, go to the self checkout station and walk out and never talk to a soul in your life? All right, uh, I did that yesterday, by the way. Uh, you can you can click list your groceries. One of the greatest inventions of all time, right? Just make the click list. I did this yesterday too. And then you go and they bring them to your door. You actually have to talk to the person who says, "Hey, I got your stuff," but you know. But and then if you have a garage at your house, you know, you can uh, lift the garage door, pull out, drive away, go to work, come back, pull in the garage, lower the garage door. Again, you don't have to talk to anybody. Then there's Amazon. You don't have to go to the store anymore. They'll bring you to your house. And the pandemic made it all worse. I'm trying to tell you that something is seriously wrong. One one, uh, uh, sociologist said that what we're experiencing right now is called a friendship recession. That more and more people are actually alone or feeling lonely. Matter of fact, one in five Americans said that they were lonely or socially isolated. And the numbers happen to be particularly dismal for men. Nonetheless, the friendship recession affects everybody, every age group, every skin color, every economic group. And what I'm telling you is this is hurting us because we're not designed to be alone. We're designed to be together. I'm preaching better than you're amen. So what do we do, pastor? You ready? Get out of your house. Go talk to people. Are you hearing me? Turn off the screens. Or severely limit them. That screen is not your friend. All right? I got to go because I'm trying to let you out early. All right? Screen interaction is not the same as human interaction. Some of the worst birthday songs I've ever heard we did over Zoom. (laughs) You know, instead of texting somebody... How about you actually call them? These are called phones, by the way. Some of you are like, why do they ever admit? Why is that a phone? It's not a phone. It's a computer. It's a phone. Now, can I, can I particularly challenge the young adults and students in the room? Because you are digital natives. You've grown up with this. And the reality is it's easier to hide behind the screen than to actually interact with humans. Right? And you're going to have to go against the tide of culture in order to uh, intentionally create face-to-face relationships 
so that you can be the person that God designs you to be. I'm preaching now, all right? That's good stuff. It's important because God designed you uh, for that way. Spend some time with people you love. Uh, it, deepen your existing relationships. Start investing in new ones. Come to church. Look at all these people. These are wonderful people, right? Get in a group. Meet some new people. By the way, all the people who show up to your group for the first time, they're not strangers. They're just friends you haven't met yet, right? And if you'll invest the time, you're going to have relationships. Serve on a team. That's a great way to build relationships. Now, why should I do all these things, Pastor? Because one day you're going to die. Aren't you glad you came to church today? And the people at your funeral, after your funeral, they're going to eat potato salad. Maybe fried chicken. I promise I'll be done with the food references next week. But the only thing that's going to matter when you die is the relationship you had with God and the relationships you have with other people. Listen, because you were designed by a God of relationship for a relationship. So make, make time in your schedule. Make it a priority with how you spend or save your money. And with your actions, actually do it. That's part one. Are you ready for part two? All right, I got 12 minutes. Here we go. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. So our most important relationship is our relationship with God. And then he said, love others as yourself. How do we prioritize the others? Because there's a lot of others in our life. And uh, there's no chapter or verse in the Bible that gives us a clear list how to prioritize the others. But I think uh, overall biblical principles gives us this list right here, that our first relationship is with God. Our second, if you're married, your second most re re relationship, important relationship is your spouse, and then your kids or immediate family, and then your spiritual community and then everybody else, you know, your friendships, your work relationships, your teams, all of that, right? So I, I think, uh, again, this is not chapter and verse, but this is, I think, our understanding of Scripture that this is the priority of the relationships that you should have. Now, if you're not married, uh, I think it looks like this. You're, again, your first relationship is with God and then your immediate family and then the family of God, and then somebody coined this term, the family of man. Basically, other, your, your friendships, your you know, work relationships, classmates, things like that. So that's the way it works. Now, uh, why, why do I say this? Uh, I think they're all important, but how many know the order is important? Because some of us have these out of order. And if these get out of order, life doesn't work too well. Some parents place their priority on their children over their spouse. Some people prioritize their spouse above God. Some prioritize their work above their kids. A handful of you prioritize church over your family. Some of you prioritize sports and hobbies before God and before your family. And I don't even have to preach this to you because your life is preaching it to you right now. It's not working. It's not working. And the reason it's not working is because it's out of order. And I'm, I'm telling you that all those relationships are important, but the order is important. And we've got to prioritize our relationships. So we need to get our relationships in the right order in order for them to work at their best. It's quiet. I must be preaching really good today. So how do, how, do we, how do we do this? Well, number one, prioritize your relationship with God. Because remember, the first impacts the rest. So if we get our relationship with God in order, it's going to impact in a positive way all the rest of our relationships. And the way that you do that is the way that we've been doing it all, all January. Give God the first of your year by participating in 21 days of prayer and fasting. Just thank you to everybody who, who did that. Uh, we gave a challenge to give God the first of the day by prayer and Bible study, and then give God the first of the week by attending Sunday services every single week. Uh, we talked about that last, last week. And then give God the first of your income by giving a tithe to the Lord through the church. 
So we gave you that challenge for January. Now what do you do? Go ahead and do it all the time. Go ahead and do it this year. Go ahead and keep God first in your time, in your money, right? And, and, and do that. And what we're going to realize is it doesn't just work in January. It works every other month of the year as well. Good preaching. Amen. Second thing is to prioritize your marriage. If you're married. Last, about a year ago, Tracy and I led a small group uh, called The Art of Marriage. It wasn't much of a small group because there was like 54 people in it. So I had some assistants help me with discussions. We'd do a video teaching and then we'd break up into groups and do discussion. But the one principle of that that really just impacted me, it was so simple. Prioritize your marriage. Of course, Wayne. That's the secret. Prioritize your marriage. It's so important. How do I prioritize my marriage? Well, let me give you an illustration. Uh, years ago, I heard about a principle called the love bank. Anybody ever heard of the love bank? All right. So the love bank basically says that everyone, every couple has an emotional bank account. And you can make deposits into your love bank or and you can make withdrawals from your love bank. I don't know why I'm emphasizing love. <laughs> I just feel like I should. Okay? So you got to make deposits into your love bank. How do you do that? All right? Be nice. Woo. Uh, how about take out the trash? All right. Vacuum the floor. All right? Say nice things. That's really good. Say honoring things. Uh, be grateful. Say thank you and please spend time together. Spend time alone together. Go on a date on a regular basis. You know, go on a vacation together, all right? Uh, join a marriage group. <laughs> See what I did there? Right? Oh, go to a marriage conference. Oh, by the way, let me tell you about marriage conferences coming up at Grace Sunday, March 5th. It's called Your Best Night Out, and so our speaker is going to be here in the Sunday morning services, then he's going to come back at night, and uh, this is going to be awesome. Child care is provided, by the way. You can register at the red information tent. If you're married, you should be there. If you're engaged, you should be there. Invite married couples. It's going to be awesome, okay? So that's how you make deposits, you know, uh, non-sexual affection, and all the women said amen. <laughs> Sexual affection, and all the men said Amen. Are you getting this? So now that's great. Now the, the issue is that we also have withdrawals. How do you withdraw from the love bank? Well, saying something stupid. <laughs> Not listening to your wife. Forgetting his or her birthday. Being disrespectful. Neglecting to spend time together. Financial crisis. Family crisis, health crisis, emotional crisis, mental health crisis. Are you getting this? Harsh words, arguments, disruptions, fighting about stuff. Now, here's the problem. What do you call it when there are more withdrawals than there are deposits? Bankrupt. The truth is, a lot of our love banks can go bankrupt. And when they do, we start saying things like, I don't love him anymore. Or I'm just not into our marriage as much as I used to be. Or we've fallen out of love. I heard, I heard one, one I, want, I, want to notice, I want you to notice that a lot of times the withdrawals happen and they're not even your fault. You know, somebody gets sick, somebody in your family dies, you, you lose your job. All kinds of reasons to have withdrawals. So, so, so sociologists tell us you've got to put five times as many investments in your bank account than there are withdrawals because withdrawals are going to be coming all the time because that's life. And so you've got to prioritize your marriage by investing in the, right, say it with me, love thing. You should also prioritize your kids. Prioritize your kids. Now, our culture has this one turned upside down, don't we? Because we've created a culture that worships kids. 
and idolizes kids. Don't hate me. The very best thing that you can teach your child is that they are not the center of the universe. Now, make sure they know they're loved. Make sure they know they're secure. You will always love them. You're never going to leave them. You're never going to abandon them. But you also need to teach them they are not the center of the universe. Because if we teach our kids that they're the most important person in the world, then later in their lives, they're going to prioritize themselves above God and above you. And can I remind you, again, don't hate me, your child is not yours. Your child is a gift from who? As a parent, you are the steward of that child. And what an amazing gift it is. Remember, we serve a God who asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Now, there's a lot to that story, but it's a reminder to us that our children are a gift from the Lord. And can I go ahead and tell you, mom and dad, that your primary responsibility as the steward of that child is to teach them to fear the Lord. I think too many of us fear the disapproval of our kids more than we fear the disapproval of God. Some parents actually prioritize their kids above their spouse. And that's bad because putting your kids first in your marriage will destroy your marriage. Now, that shows up in a few ways. Uh, being Being unwilling to go out with just the two of you because they can't imagine abandoning the kids. Taking the kid's side when there's a conflict. Uh, Always making plans that focus on the kids and never making any plans for yourselves. Uh, Focusing your relationship on your relationship with your children and putting your relationship with your spouse on the back burner because after all, we'll work on us when the kids are grown up. Problem is, there may not be an us when the kids are grown up. How about spending excessive amounts of money on the kids when your budget can't support it? Filling your life with kids' activities and never taking time to connect with your spouse. Being unwilling to make the children sleep in their own beds. Now, there are times uh, when the children's needs come first, right? Diapers need changed. They got to eat, right? If they hurt, you know, you got to take care of them. These are things that need fairly immediate attention. So I'm not suggesting that you walk away from your injured child because you and your wife got to go get a cup of coffee. That's not what I'm saying. And neither am I suggesting that you should ignore your child except for emergencies, but it needs to be clear to your kids that your primary relationship is with God and then one another and then them. That's actually the best thing that you can do for your children because that's what they want. They feel security when you do that. So after our spouse, we prioritize our relationship with our kids. Now, all of the parents know that the days are long, but the years are They grow up so fast. So we have to be very intentional about building our relationship with our kids. And the best way to do that is spelled T-I-M-E. Spend time with your kids. Whatever that looks like, make sure that you spend time. And don't confuse quality time with quantity time. They need both from you. So spend time with your kids, whatever that looks like. I heard, I was talking with this with some of our pastors and, and one of them said that, One idea a friend of their had was that uh, on that child's, whatever the date of their birthday fell in the month, they would spend time uh, alone with that child, prioritizing that child on that date every month. Right? So there's there's a thousand things you can do, but spend time with your kids. You can attend a parenting conference that we're going to have later in the year. There are several parenting groups to help you how to do that. Prioritize your relationship with your kids, all right? And then prioritize your spiritual community. We talked a lot about this last Sunday, but the Bible says every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And Hebrews says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. So we're supposed to prioritize spiritual community. And let me just encourage you, you're never going to be able to do the one another's while you're watching online, okay? So it's important to be in the house of God and, and, and not, just, not just be here. Can I go ahead and say, make relationships while you're here. Let me give you a few pro tips. Ready? Come early. What a novel idea. 
right? And one you hear, grab a cup of coffee from the, from the cafe. It's free. It's free every Sunday, right? And talk to people. Meet some people. Instead of talking to that same small group of people that you talk to every single Sunday, why not go ahead and meet somebody? Some of you sit in the same seats in the same section every single Sunday. Go ahead and make that your group, all right? Talk to them. Hey, what's your name? You know? And get to know one another. And then when somebody new shows up in your area, hey, newbie. <laughs> Don't wait for me in the middle of the service, say, turn around and introduce yourself. You should have already done that. Are you ready? So then get in a group, serve on a team, get in a relationship, prioritize your spiritual community. One more. And then we prioritize all of our relationships. So for those of you that aren't married or don't have kids, listen closely. It's important that you remember that relationships go beyond just romantic relationships and children. The relationship with friends and colleagues and community are extremely important to everybody including you. And you may not have those built-in relationships of marriage and kids, but relationships are just as important to you. And we have to be very intentional about making them. How many know the friends you have are very important? How many know having friends is very important? Three of you. (laughs) Jim Rohn said it this way, You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose your friends wisely. Your relationships at work are important. How about instead of just showing up to work, how about actually getting to know people? Uh, The relationships you build while doing extracurricular stuff like sports and and cheerleading and band, and those are those are Tracy and I, those are some of the best relationships we've had in our lives is sports and and being around our other kids, teammates, families. And how many know all of us need to build some relationships with lost people so that we can impact them for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Now, all of these are important, but let me remind you, the order is important. Because let me remind you, one day you're gonna die. Here I go again. And you're going to stand before the Lord. And there's really going to be two questions he's going to ask you. Did you love me? And did you love other people? Now, if you are here today and you don't have a relationship with God, then you got to deal with that. You need to surrender your heart and life to Jesus Christ today. That's the most important question anybody can ever ask you. Do you have a relationship with God? Not, do you know, do you believe in God or do you know about God? That's not what he's going to ask. Do you know me? Do you love me? Am I first? Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. If that's you today and you need to make things right with God, I'm going to challenge you to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm going to challenge you to surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ. That is the most important relationship you have. If that's you, pray this way. Others around you are going to pray out loud and say, God, I surrender. My life is yours. From this day forward, you are in control. Thank you for the cross and for forgiving me of my sin. Thank you for the resurrection and giving me eternal life. From this day forward, you're first. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now listen, if that's you and you're beginning a relationship with Jesus or you recently began a relationship with Jesus, then one of the groups, there's actually two groups on the list there that are for brand new people. It's called Fresh Start. And one meets on Sunday mornings, one meets on Thursdays. I'd love for you to be part of those groups. Now, that's, that's going to help you. But I want us to ask one more question before I dismiss you to go out into the hub. How are your relationships with other people? Are they out of order? And if so, what are you going to do to get them back in order? So if you don't mind bowing your heads one more time. And just ask, Holy Spirit, 
what are you saying to me in this message? What do I need to do to get my relationships in order? My relation, if you're married, my relationship with my spouse, am I prioritizing my marriage? Help me to spend the time and the energy to build it, to strengthen it. If you have kids, they're not the top priority in your life, but they are very important and they need you. No one has a greater impact on kids, parents, than you. What about your relationship with your spiritual community? If you're kind of hanging back and kind of watching from the sidelines, I'm gonna encourage you, take a step. Take a step, join a group, serve on a team, go to growth track. Be here consistently in your relationship with other people. Some of you have broken relationships because of unforgiveness, because of hurt, because of pain. I wanna encourage you to take the first step of reconciliation and bringing healing to that. Again, freedom groups are very powerful helping us to deal with those things. But can we pray, Lord God, we pray that your spirit would help us, that in 2023, that we would love you first. And God, that we would love others well. May we obey the first commandment and the second one. We want to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And we want to love our neighbor as ourself. When we stand before you, Lord, we want to stand before you and hear, well done. May it be so in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen.